This is the Fusion Ultralight Aerobatic Slope Sawer. It was originally designed by Leadfeather over on RC Groups and I'll put a link to the thread in the notes. Rather than a commercially cut EPP wing, my version is uh, insulation foam, hot wire cut and Depron tail surfaces. The pod is made from uh, 3mm balsa on the sides and 2.5mm balsa uh, going across the top and the bottom. And it's all covered with scotch tough uh, clear cloth tape for uh, a lot more strength and durability. And it has a squishy foam nose cone also covered with the scotch tough tape. The original Fusion had a, a bolt on wing uh, but I've opted for uh, my normal rubber band tie downs. Um, which works really well for a slope sawer when you're going to crash it a fair bit, like I do. The um, aileron wires are coming out of the middle, so on the wing, uh, I've rerouted, they used to come out the back there, I've rerouted these to come out of the middle, so that um, ma matches up to these ones. And to build it, you start off with the side walls and you can download uh, the plans for these from uh, the Fusion thread on RC groups uh, or you can sort of design it yourself so what you need to do is design it around your components and at the nose it just needs to be deep enough to fit the battery and it only needs to be wide enough to fit the battery as well I've made this one a little bit wider probably thin it down a little bit, I probably will in a future version. And so there's the hatch there and then back behind the hatch it just needs to be deep enough and wide enough to fit your servo, uh, your uh, receiver in. And uh, I actually made this one a little bit too slim so I had to take the case off the Hobby King 6 channel receiver. So that just fits in there. And the VEC. Then coming back to the servos, the servos lie flat on the floor and you'll see there's uh, little holes cut out on either side. That's so that you can glue the servos in after you've closed in the body and get into it each side. That's the elevator servo which is a micro metal gear rudder servo which is just a hextronic uh, 9 gram. And the wing bed, you could just leave that flat and sort of uh, build it up to fit the wing on it or you can you can actually cut the bottom curve of the wing airfoil into the side walls and that just means that the wing sits nice and flat straight onto the pod and the back is just tapered right down to just fit the boom and inside there's a couple of bulkheads there's a, a firewall style bulkhead at the front and another one just in front of the servos that has a hole that you can pass the servo wires through to the receiver. And there's a, just a, another little little one here that the um, the boom slots into. And that's enough to make a really strong, stiff uh, pod. Now for the boom part of it. So the boom's detachable. It just slots on there and you can, I can either glue that on or I've just taped that around. Uh, while I'm mucking around with the design. So let's have a look at the, the tail section. The rudder has a little torsion spring uh, in the hinge line there and a pull line that runs up through a little guide here up to the servo and you can see how that torsion spring and the pull line act against each other. Works very well. On the elevator I have a uh, rubber band return spring attached to a little control horn underneath and a pull line same as the rudder running through a little guide operating the elevator and I set it up so I get a full 90 degree up elevator uh, and then only about 30 degrees down elevator. Uh, this elevator is 2mm balsa covered with iron on laminate, 3 mil laminate. Uh, I haven't tried it yet but um, I'm hoping that's going to be strong enough. All up it weighs about 11 grams and it's a carbon fibre spar 
passing through a little stub uh, piece of the the boom and the control horn is just epoxy glued onto that inner part there. The rudder is 6mm Depron covered with iron-on laminate and just glued onto the boom. Leadfeather actually has a full flying rudder on his designs um, but I couldn't quite work out how to get that to work with the pull lines passing through there. For the 90 degree up elevator travel to work this uh, hole in the control horn needs to be behind the pivot point otherwise once you get to about there you're pulling straight ahead and you won't be able to pull it up any further and for the return spring that hole there needs to be in front of the pivot point otherwise when you get past about there it'll just flip over and stay like that